200 years ago, seven men deeply interested in the natural world came together to create a unique institution, one that would allow them to share their passion, discoveries, and scientific knowledge with others. Meeting on the second floor of an apothecary shop, they laid the foundation for an academy that would boldly investigate the natural world. Today, in the center of Philadelphia, this academy stands as one of North America's greatest natural history museums. It's an academy that's home to active exploration and discovery, a repository of one of the world's great specimen collections and natural history libraries. This is the Academy of Natural Sciences of Drexel University. There are between 17 and 18 million scientific specimens housed here at the Academy that have been collected over the years. And every one of them represents a eureka moment of, of one sort or another. In our lifetimes, a host of many different things will, will cause the extinction of many species of life on Earth. And these specimens will be our only physical representation of the biodiversity that once existed here. There's a tremendous amount of data associated with them. One could come here and study the external morphology of the specimens. They could look at their reproductive condition, determine what time of year they were spawning. So I, I like to think of them as kind of like a book that, um, that you might check out of a library and read. I can go into the collection any day of the week, look at specimens that Audubon collected. Um, here's a specimen that John Gould collected in the 1830s in Australia. Um, you literally point to any, any place on the map, we can go into the collection and find specimens from that area. Historical records are always subjective. Uh, they always claim to be giving a picture of the truth, but it is always through the lens of the historian, whereas specimens, biological specimens, tell us exactly how things were at any given time. They're the nearest we can get to a completely objective account of the history of the natural world. The Academy's library is one of the most important natural history libraries in North America. We have about 250,000 volumes in all fields of natural history, dating back to the 16th century and up to the present time. In the past year, we've had over 600 scholars come to consult our records here in the archives. What we see here are the field notes of James Wren, and in this case here, we have a tray from our entomology department a tray of insects collected on the Vanderbilt expedition to the Belgian Congo. Specifically, these insects were collected on the 6th of September, 1934. So I can turn literally to the 6th of September, 1934, and we can read Wren's entry for that day. And I can see, in fact, he complains the day was dull and overcast. And he also describes that today we collected fish, snails, and insects. I felt quite poorly today, my stomach paining and a lack of ambition. When the public thinks of the Academy of Natural Sciences in Philadelphia, they think of us as the Dinosaur Museum. But that's actually only a tiny part of what goes on here. The, the research extends into all fields of natural history and covers the time span not only from dinosaurs, but right up to the very minute. Our focus during the last 10 years has been on climate change impacts in Mongolia, because the climate change in that region has been over two degrees centigrade or almost four degrees Fahrenheit. And it is beginning to have very strong impacts on both the people who live there and the animals that they take care of. We've been in the business of paleontology for 200 years. And that includes active research today where we're not only building on the finds and the discoveries and the interpretations of previous fossils, but actually out there finding new things. And I actually have here specimens of what we've named Tiktaalik rose. And it was really a dream fossil that helps us understand the transition from one major group, what we call fishes, to another, the limbed animals or tetrapods. 
At the moment, uh, oyster shells that were collected in the 1880s that are, that are in our collection are being used by scientists in California to establish the baselines for oil pollution in the Gulf of Mexico. And this is with specific reference to the Deep Horizon oil spill of 2010. The Patrick Center is looking at various current day issues like the Marcellus shell drilling impact to the Pennsylvania area, as well as impact of climate change on tidal marshes within the Delaware restaurant. Coastal ecosystems and uh, coastal wetlands in general are very interesting environments and they're ideal for examining the impacts of both climate change and also localized human impacts. One of the interesting things about this site in particular at Dennis is you can actually see the cedar trees that have died off that are still standing dead and that's uh, directly caused by sea level rise. We don't want to lose these systems. There are people that depend upon these areas for their livelihood, so it's important to understand the processes that allow them to exist and continue into the future. Yeah. The one great thing about the Academy is that we have expertise in a range of areas. We are able to do water chemistry, look at contaminants, look at the whole food web from algae to insects to fish. So we have started a study on Marcellus Shale and it's using many of the same kind of techniques. What we really need here is to have some real data, some real results. It's not an issue of saying we're trying to find the silver bullet to stop drilling. We're saying we're trying to find out what's going on. Part of our mission here is to make sure that science education is fun and engaging and that we give people a sense of wonder about the natural world. This is the place that might just be your first introduction to, to a butterfly, to a screech owl, to uh, a dinosaur bone. That simple meeting creates the intellectual spark, even for a youngster, where questions begin. And isn't that what it's all about, being curious? Now, following the historic affiliation with Drexel University, the Academy is poised to become one of the great centers of discovery, learning, and civic engagement in the natural and environmental sciences. And to combine the research with an academic mission, we become an expeditionary force, perhaps unrivaled. Issues regarding the environment are going to become more and more and more important. And I think this gives us a, a presence and a set of possibilities that are just absolutely enormous. I mean, in those 18 million objects may be the answers to some really big puzzling questions right now about how the Earth has evolved the way it has and, and what uh, potentially threatens it or what could strengthen it. This is a place of discovery. All around us are, are discoveries that have been made in other generations, at other times, but also materials that are possible for new discoveries to be made with. So we just house things here that are waiting for discovery. You know, a hundred years from now, people will be looking back at my specimens uh, to answer evolutionary and ecological questions that I can't even envision, you know, we can't even frame in our minds right now. For me, what is most important is that the collections be used to teach not only the facts about the animals and the organisms in the collections, but to teach people to look at nature in a very detailed and profound way. I love being associated with all that goes on here at the Academy. It's a fascinating group of people. They're doing interesting things all over the world. Uh, and not a day goes by here when something isn't discovered, something isn't learned, uh, and, and then I don't get some uh, insight into the way the world works. The Academy's future is boundless. As the next century unfolds, we forge ahead to meet the challenges before us, inspired by the beauty and diversity of the natural world and our desire to make our planet sustainable. Our scientists continue to discover the amazing biodiversity of our planet, building on our collections, and sharing with you the clues these specimens provide into the most critical scientific issues of today and tomorrow.
We invite you to join us as we journey into our third century and unlock the mysteries of life and who we are.